Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video we will be deriving and proving the properties of the OLS estimators for the simple linear regression model in the matrix form. So let's remind ourselves what the matrix formula, formulation of the simple linear regression model looks like. Y is equal to X beta plus epsilon, where epsilon are the random errors or the error terms, if you will. And before we start deriving the properties of beta, beta hat, let's remind ourselves what the formula is for beta hat. So beta hat is equal to X transpose X inverse times X transpose Y. And we need to remember that the matrix X transpose X inverse is a symmetric matrix. So that means if we swap the rows or the columns, there will be no change to that, to this matrix. It will always be the same. Let's get talking about the error terms. In the previous video where I introduced the form, simple linear regression model formulation in the matrix form, I didn't really talk about any of the assumptions that we're making about our error terms. The first assumption that I'd like to mention is that for any epsilon i, the expected value of epsilon i is equal to zero for all i. And these i's are in the range of one, two, all the way up to n, because we have n um, data points that we are using in our model. So the expected value of epsilon i is zero. That means the expected value of the vector epsilon is going to be equal to a zero vector for n rows. So it's essentially epsilon, the expected value of epsilon is going to be simply a vector of zeros with there being n rows, zeros. So that's the first assumption that we need to make when we're um, dealing with the simple linear regression model in matrix form. The expected value of epsilon is equal to a zero vector. Next assumption that we're going to make is about the variance of the epsilon i, for all i. The variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma squared for all values of i. So if we then go and look at the vector epsilon again, the variance of epsilon, well, we're going to need to have something that looks like this, sigma squared, sigma squared, sigma squared, all the way down up to here. The variance of epsilon is equal to sigma squared times i. The variance of any individual little epsilon is equal to sigma squared. But the variance of epsilon is sigma squared i. Well, some of you might be pointing out by now, but wait, something is wrong here. You're drawing a, uh, this matrix, but you haven't talked about anything. Why are all these correlation terms zero? Well, that's our third assumption. So this is our variance covariance matrix. So our third assumption is that the epsilon i's, this is assumption number three, the epsilon i's are uncorrelated uncorrelated and if they're uncorrelated well then that means that the variance of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 is equal to zero and that's in fact just the covariance of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 so they are that's equal to zero that also means thus that the covariance of epsilon i epsilon j is equal to zero for all i not equal to j. And what that means, this is in fact then all these dots over here, all these empty places where there should be zeros. These things put together allow us to say, so from assumption number two and number three, and assumption number three, assumption number two, the variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma squared for all i, and assumption number three that says that the covariance of epsilon i and epsilon j is equal to zero for all i not equal to j, then these things put together allow us to say that the variance covariance matrix or the variance of the vector epsilon is equal to sigma squared times an identity matrix 
um, with n, n by n being its dimension. So the variance of epsilon is equal to sigma squared, sigma squared on all the diagonal terms of the n rows, and all these other entries should be zero that are on that are not on the diagonal terms. We've gone about the first three assumptions, and that is that variance of epsilon i is, is equal to sigma squared, that's assumption two. The expected value of epsilon i is equal to zero for all i, variance of epsilon i is sigma squared, and the covariance of epsilon i, epsilon j is equal to zero for all i, j. That just means that all of the terms are uncorrelated with each other. The epsilon i's are uncorrelated with each other. These three assumptions put together with the fourth assumption allow for a very powerful construction of our simple linear regression mo model, which allows us to derive various results from it. The last assumption that I would like to mention, assumption number four, is that, so the error terms are normally distributed. Epsilon i follows the normal distribution with some mean and some variance. Combining assumptions one through four, we can get, yield the following result, that any one epsilon i will be distributed normally with a mean of zero. This is from assumption number one. Its variance is sigma squared. This is from assumption number two. And well, you, you, you should be asking for now, well, you're saying assumption one through four, where's assumption number three? What assumption three states is that epsilon one, epsilon two, up to epsilon n are independent and identically distributed. Combine that with assumption number four, then we know that epsilon i is iid normal with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. So let's go and combine all these ideas into the matrix formulation because after all we'll, we are working in the matrix formulation of the simple linear regression model. Epsilon i, epsilon, the vector epsilon of error terms will follow the normal distribution with a zero vector, so it's a zero vector with n rows being its mean because the expected value of each individual epsilon i is zero and it will have a variance covariance matrix of sigma squared times by an identity matrix of dimension n by n. And that's that. Those are the first assumptions that we need to make about the error terms in our model for the simple linear regression model. So now let's get started with deriving and proving the properties of the OLS estimators. Now that we have shown the assumptions that we're making about the error terms, there's a very important thing to mention. Epsilon is an error term or a random error. We cannot directly observe it or, or notice its exact value. It's unobservable. We need an estimator. We need something to estimate the properties of epsilon. So for that, we use the vector epsilon hat. An epsilon hat is defined as y minus y hat. So it is equal to y minus x times beta hat. And for now, just take it, take it for granted that sigma squared hat, which is now our estimated variance of the error term, because we cannot observe directly the error term, so we need an estimator. Sigma squared hat is equal to the mean squared error which is equal to the sum of squared errors over n minus p minus one. For now, just, just accept that this is the result, that the mean squared error is equal to the sum of squared errors over n minus p minus one, and that that is the value of the estimator sigma squared hat. This is the estimated value that we are going to use for the error term, for the variance of the error terms. As we're going forward, what we wish to actually show is that the expected value of beta hat is equal to beta. And we wish to show that the variance of beta hat is equal to sigma squared hat times x transpose x inverse. 